Welcome to the Swan River in Perth, guys. And in today's painting, we're going to be inspired by one of these magnificent beasts coming up. Hi again there guys, Emma here from Paint and Pino, giving you some top tips for all things art and design. And in today's painting, we're actually going to be inspired by one of these gorgeous pelicans that we're lucky enough to get here on the Swan River in Perth. So the idea is that we're going to use more vibrant colours. And to start with, we're just going to go with a very simple and basic sunset colour. So we're just going to use the warm red, the cool yellow and the titanium white. And of course, the trusty old sponge. This just makes blending of the sunset much quicker and easier. So I'm actually going to put the paint directly onto the canvas itself. So I'm going to be aware that obviously I want to keep the lighter areas in the middle. So you can see that I've just put the red towards the top and the bottom. Then I'm just going to put the white generally across the center and I'm going to be mixing this in with the yellow as well. A lot of people don't like to use this because it does use a little bit more paint than you'd ordinarily use if you were mixing with a bit of water. But I just love to get those really gorgeous, lucid, thick tones when you put a lot of paint onto the canvas like this. But bearing in mind, this is it. I'm not going to add any more paint into this now. So everything you see right now is going to be the background colour. So of course, because of the nature of it being lighter in the middle, I want to start in the middle. Once I've gone with the red, of course, I'm going to contaminate the sponge. So you want to try and keep those lighter colours as light as possible. Just a note as well, guys, I always have three or four sponges to hand. Sponges are pretty difficult to wash out. So it was always really handy to have some clean sponges if you want to do a little bit more blending accurately. So that you don't start mixing all those colours in together. So just using that white and yellow all the way around now, being quite sporadic with the way I'm distributing some of the paint. You really want to have a nice sort of painterly style, almost like an impressionist style to this sunset in a moment. But then when we start to blend it in with the with the reds, as you can see now, it's going to start making it much more subtle. So we've got quite a lot of white on this canvas. Uh, so you're going to get some really subtle reds as well. But I'm just being very aware as I'm going through the red now, it can be incredibly overpowering. So I'm actually barely touching the canvas. I'm just titivating the top of it because if I push down too hard, it's just going to mix all of that red paint in and I'm going to lose any sense of contrast and distribution of paint. So I'm just grabbing a clean brush now because I've got a little bit too much red paint on that sponge already. So I'm just going to go back to the lighter colours now and then again start blending those through. You always want to blend lighter to darker colours because like I said earlier, you're going to contaminate your colours too quickly if you just go with the darker colour too early. So I do want to have some red streaks coming into the middle as well. I don't want it all to just be red at the top and the bottom and then the yellows in the middle. But I want to be a bit more subtle with the way I'm controlling this paint. So you'll get to see in a moment just how much control you actually have with a, a sponge. I think much more so actually than a, a brush, especially when you're working on larger scale paintings. This is a relatively small canvas. This is just a 30 by 40 centimeter canvas. But if I'm working on a larger scale or even a wall mural, I would always start with a sponge when I'm trying to blend those colors together. So I'm just adding a little bit more movement now here at the top, just to get a sense of those gorgeous wispy clouds working through that sunset. But remember the nature of this painting is I want it to be quite dramatic. So I'm not going for naturalistic colors as much because I really want this pelican when we start to do the foreground to stand off the page. So I'm actually trying to make my sunset a little bit more subtle than I'd normally work. So quite a sort of a, a mix of that white, giving a nice pastel effect to some of these colors. So I'm just gonna work a cleaner brush again through these now, just very subtly blending these colors together. You can see the amount of control you actually can have with the sponge, but the trick is to keep working with clean sponges so that you don't end it with mud. You'll end it with the same color otherwise if you're just blending the thing over and over. Now I'm just mixing up some yellow here because I want to put a bit more emphasis of the actual sun in the middle. So I'm just using the back end of the sponge now. So I'm almost removing some of that paint initially with the green coarse sponge on the back. 
and then I'm just going to add a little bit more white as you can see here just to give, bit, give a bit more definition to the actual sun in the middle. Just a bit of finishing touches now with a bit more white. There's a bit more contrast in the top. Again, it's trying to get that movement of cloud. Really get those lovely sense of swirls working through the painting. But remember, this is just the background, so don't be stressing too much. So in terms of the actual pelican detail now, I'm just going with a fine detail round head brush size six. I'm working with a pale blue just as it's a really good contrast. I don't like to draw as such with lead onto paintings. I just draw directly on with the actual pigment. So I'm just sketching out now very loosely where I want my pelican to sit. It's really important that you do this guys at the beginning in terms of getting composition correct. You don't want to end up doing detail at the beginning and then finding that you have actually run out of space or that you maybe haven't got the, the, the main subject matter in the location you want it to be. So if I've made a mistake here it's pretty easy just to sort of correct where I want the actual outline of this pelican to go but I'm fairly happy with what I've got going on here. So now I'm just going to add a little bit more of the actual beak detail and eye detail so I get some of those, those layers working up. And that's what painting is all about, it's all about layers. So I'm just going to add a little bit of white now. I would always recommend that you let your background dry, but for the purpose of this painting I'm doing it obviously at a bit of pace. So I am working directly on top of some white pigment, so I need to be a little bit thicker with my paint just to make it stand out. But obviously if you've got a dry background it's going to be a lot easier to actually distribute the paint on top. So I'm just working this beak and this is like a base layer really. If I do it in white initially it's going to give me much more control in terms of the colours that I'm going to choose later. So just for your benefit here guys I have added uh, blue onto my palette now so I've gone with the cool blue. I just want to have the full range of primary colours to hand so that I can really get this pelican to stand off the page. I genuinely have no idea what colours I'm going to go for at the moment. Um, I'm going to wing it, excuse the pun, but uh, I do certainly want it to stand out from the background. So, you know, as, as once we've got this base colour on, then we're going to get a better idea of what colours I want this pelican to be. But it's not going to be naturalistic, that's one thing I do now. So I'm just putting a bit of green and white in here now. I think green would be quite a nice contrast against that yellow background. But what I'm not going to be doing is having the same colour all the way through. I want to sort of do lots of different types of colours. So every section of the pelican is basically going to be a different colour. But there's no rules. Absolutely no rules on this pelican whatsoever. And you can do whatever colour scheme that you want in terms of some people like to do them, uh, the, you know, a colour scheme that actually reflects the, the decor in their house, which is always a lovely idea for doing a painting. So again, it's all about base layers here. I'm just working some yellow now. Got to go quite thick, obviously, to make it stand out above that background. I think in terms of the actual main colours, yellow is not going to be a, a main colour for me because it will be too similar to what I've got going on in the background. But it just is going to sort of give a nice highlight to some of the wing areas. Just a quick reference as well guys in terms of how I hold the brush. A lot of people do ask how, how do you hold a paintbrush. Obviously everyone's got their own styles but I like to treat my brush like it's a pencil. So I've got quite a sketchy style when I'm doing detailed drawings like this as it were with paint. So that you've got a lot of control. If you paint or if you hold the paintbrush too close to the head you're going to be too tight, you're going to be too tense. So you're not going to get a lot of natural movement going on with the wrist. Whereas I find a lot of people actually tend to, hold, tend to hold the brush a little bit too far away so they might be four or five inches away from the actual head of the paintbrush and you don't have enough control. So I always recommend that you know you feel comfortable where you would hold a pencil that's where you should be holding your paintbrush so that you've got quite a nice balance. It's probably what's that about an inch and a half away from the head so that you've got complete control but you also got quite a nice loose style when it comes to sketching. Of course when I'm talking sketching I mean sketching with paint but it's the same technique, the exact same technique. 
So I'm just building up again that background now. So I, I want to go with the lighter colors so that I can get these stronger colors to stand out in a moment. I'm still not fully convinced what I'm gonna go with, but I think it's probably gonna be more of the blues and the greens. That's the beauty of paintings like this. They tend to build naturally. I think sometimes when you over plan paintings, they, uh, I don't know, they just don't seem to work out quite as well as ones where you're a bit more spontaneous in terms of certainly color schemes. So in terms of the tools that I've used today, guys, it's pretty straightforward. I've just gone with the sponge, as you saw, for the background. And now all I'm using is my size 6 roundhead brush, my trusty tool that I, I tend to use. I do prefer roundhead to flathead. It's just a personal choice. I just find I have a little bit more control and just a bit more variety. I'm not an artist who uses loads and loads of different brushes. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that if you do. It's just a preference. I like to work quite quickly. Um, and I like to make the brush work for me. If I was doing larger areas of paint, then obviously I'm going to go with a probably a size 10 or even a size 12 roundhead brush. But I, this is a great size because you can still do an element of detail, but it's not so small that you can't distribute brush, uh, the paint quite quickly like you can see here. So again, I'm just doing that background now, predominantly white, just to give me a little bit more control in a moment when I decide to actually come up with these brighter, vivid colors, because I really want this pelican to stand out against the sunset background. The key really with any painting, guys, is it's all about contrast. So you really want to try and gauge that, what is going to be your lightest color, what is going to be your darkest color. A lot of artists don't like to use black paint. I personally prefer to use navy blue as my darkest reference point. But remember, you cannot get lighter than white. So of course, once you've painted onto the canvas, you've lost all that white. So that's why I'm just putting the white back in. So it just gives me that element of control. So that if I want to have light highlighted areas, I've already got that white background as a, as a template as it were. So just working some of that detail into it now with the blue. I think the blue is going to work really nicely against this sunset background. What I don't want to do as well is I don't want it to be in block color. So this is not going to be a naturalistic painting. So I'm not going to be using a fan brush to do feathers or any techniques like that. It's going to be very stylized. So I want to have lots of distinct lines. You can see I'm doing here little marks suggesting where those wings and textures go, but more in a, a regular fashion. One of the hardest things I find as a, as a painter, just because the human brain naturally wants to do things in symmetry or wants to work in patterns, is to actually make marks that are irregular. You've really got to sort of force your hand to, to create that effect so that you get this lovely textual quality going on with your pelican. trying to figure out here I think yeah I think I'm going to keep working with the blue just on the head just to really make that stand out it's always tricky as well I find when you overthink that's when I start to make mistakes sometimes people often say the hardest decision is knowing when to stop when you're doing a painting because you can just overwork a painting and you want to try and make it perfect whereas actually if you go with the first decision you make often not always, but often is the best choice. So you just got to trust yourself a little bit and have a little bit of confidence, which is 90% of what painting is all about anyway. If you can have a lot of confidence, then uh, you're going to be onto a winner. So when I was talking earlier about not using black, you can see why this, I think black would destroy this painting. It would be too stark. So I'm just gonna use the blue as the darkest reference point. Obviously you can get different variations of tones of blue. But it is important that you always, always try and achieve that lovely sense of contrast in whatever painting you're doing. Otherwise you're just gonna end up with a really flat and dull painting. Whereas if you want to get that all awesome sort of 3D element, you want it to stand off the page, that is done through contrast. 
Now, although I did say earlier that I do have just one brush, bit of a cheat, I actually have several versions of that one brush. It's just because again, I'm doing live videos like this, so I want it to be able to, uh, I don't be wasting time cleaning the brush. So I've got about six or seven of these same size brushes just to hand so that I can change color schemes pretty quickly. But obviously you're just gonna be using water. One thing you need to be aware guys with acrylic is if you're using water to water your paint down, you actually start to destroy the compound of the paint. So it's just due to the nature of the way acrylic is made up. I'm not going to bore you with the science behind this, but if you watered acrylic paint down too much, and I know people like to use water to help blend, but you actually lose a lot of the quality of the color. So just try and be aware, if you are washing your brush, I always have a tissue to hand so that I can actually dry the brush off before I then start to paint with the pigment again. So it's all, all about trying to be vibrant with your paint. Obviously, if you're using paints like oils, you don't have that same problem because of the consistency and the vibrancy of oil. It's always going to be more, much more vibrant than acrylic, but this is for beginner painters. So if you're generally using acrylic paints at the beginning, which are much easier to use in oils, just because they're easier to distribute, you just wanna be aware that especially when you're blending colors, if you're putting too much water into that pigment, guys, you're really going to lose that quality of paint. A lot of people do ask, why do I use so much acrylic? It's for that exact reason. So, you know, you saw at the beginning where I was blending the background. If I didn't use that amount of pigment, I would have to counteract that with water and then I'm never gonna get that quality of color going on in the background. You can't really tell from a video, but when you look close up on a canvas, you can tell those artists that use lots of water because you can see the, I call it like crusty paint. You can see that paint in the background where it starts to come through. You see little elements of the canvas coming through. Whereas you want to get a nice true color by using plenty of pigment to be able to blend it through. You can of course use mediums as well, guys. I'm a big fan of using mediums, but you know, they can get expensive. But just for a top tip, there are plenty of cheap versions of using with um, like alternatives to mediums, and I've done plenty of videos on that, okay? So, for example, if you want to distribute paint without using water, you want to use an oily uh, contact. So I like to use that. You know when you have the, the primer paint, and it has that oily surface at the top when you haven't mixed it in? That's fantastic for actually adding to your acrylic paint just to help distribute it a little bit more easily. So you can see what I mean in terms of the textures here. So I'm just doing a series of contrasting lines. So the yellow and the red work beautifully together just because they complement each other pretty well. So you just wanna be aware that you don't want to create mud. So if I'm mixing all three primary colors, so if I've got that red and the yellow and then it's mixing into the blue, all three primary colors are gonna make brown every single time, okay? So it's just a basic color um, mixing lesson here guys you always want to keep your color schemes uh, appropriate so if I'm working with my blues I'm going to go with the cooler colors I can go with my blue into the green no problem but just be aware when you're doing a painting like this that you're not mixing those three primary colors together again if you want more information guys on color mixing there are videos that I've done which I'll leave a link just below but it's all about just really experimenting with the colors that you've got to hand but making sure that you're not creating mud on the page Just adding a little bit more of a contrast here to the head. I feel like I just want to add a little bit more white into there so it just stand out against that, that sunset background. Now for the eye, very subtly, I'm just going to put a little contrasting line around the edge. We do have rather unusual seabirds over here in Australia. It's all to do with the UV um, or, the, or the lack of ozone I guess we have but our birds have really strange eyes. They're very white with very small uh, sort of black dots in the middle whereas most birds have quite beautiful big black eyes. So I'm just going to recreate that. And then just to finish off, I'm just going to add a little bit more contrast because it doesn't stand out enough at the front of the beak against that background. So just adding a bit of blue here, going into the green, just to give a bit more definition. 
It makes a massive difference now in terms of standing out against that sunset background. And there we have it, a dynamic pelican at sunset.